We will now see a 5.1 home theater equipment made by Altec Leasing for Dell Computers. It is a receiver with amplifier and subwoofer all in one. It consists of a subwoofer with built-in amplifier for the subwoofer and its five satellite speakers making it very compact but with enough power for a TV room. And equipment like this is currently at just over $200 on Amazon. On the back, it has a diagnostic port to check its operation. The way it works is simply turn the device on and connect each of the three inputs to the diagnostic port as seen in the video. I disconnected the speakers and connect one by one to check that each individual channel is working properly. Listen to a high pitch sound if the channel is working. This is used to diagnose inputs, outputs, and speakers. It has also the AC plug, an indicator that lights when S PDIF digital signal is detected. The S PDIF signal indicator means Sony Philips digital interface format. Having this indicator makes one think that the equipment has digital input. According to the manual this input would be in the cable with the yellow tip that corresponds to the base and the central speaker, but for some reason, even if I manage to detect digital signal by connecting to the S PDIF output of a DVD, I did not get anything to be heard even if the music was playing. So I have no idea how this works with digital signal. It has the connectors for the five satellite speakers, a knob for the base level, and finally the input cable that is divided into three one quarter connectors and each one is stereo so we have a front left and right front connector in another connector we have left and right rear and bottom input and center speaker in the other this system comes as this because it was designed to work with PC computers especially one of the Dell Optiplex series and PC computers commonly had no digital outputs like the Macintosh that came with optical outputs in the port of headphone jack for many years When the 5.1 sound was popularized, the sound cards of the PCs had a jack for each pair of channels and that is why this Altec leasing system is designed as well with three one-quarter stereo jacks each. Yellow for center speaker and subwoofer, green for front left and right speakers, and finally black for left and right rear speakers. Later I will make some videos of two other subwoofers with amplifier for satellite speakers and subwoofer just like this, but the difference is that the others were made to work with specific equipment like Bose Media Center and Xbox 360 and you have to make more complex adaptations so that those can work on other equipment. This system has the advantage that it is practically a 5-channel amplifier for voice and an already filtered subwoofer channel, so you can use it only as a subwoofer on another equipment or turn it into a 2.1 system of 5 or 4 speakers or any another combination since it is delivering in the inputs for each amplifier individually so you do what you want with them. This makes it very practical since you could throw an HDMI audio signal splitter or optical to external analog and it will be everything you need for your home theater connecting to your TV or Apple TV or other streaming device. To give you an idea of the space savings that this entails, a normal home theater would occupy a subwoofer with integrated power and receiver with amplifier and smart TV or TV with a streaming device. In my particular case, I do not use the radio or other devices to listen to music or watch movies at home. The Apple TV performs all those, so I would only need TV, Apple TV, digital signal separator to analog and this Altec leasing system. And even if we talk about another device to eliminate the receiver, the converter is very small and can be hidden almost anywhere, while the receiver amplifier does not. You could say that is better to have a receiver amplifier system because it handles more power, 
But being honest, how often do you listen to your movies at maximum volume? Speaking of power, among the most outstanding specifications we have that the system has a total of 200 continuous watts of power. That is to say, it is not peak power or the maximum power before it explodes, it is what it can take continuously and comfortably. Delivers 21 watts to the front and rear speakers both left and right, and 23 watts to the center speaker, all this with less than 1% of total harmonic distortion. The subwoofer has 94 watts, this is more than three times the power sent to each satellite speaker individually, another video will see why this difference is handled this way. Now let's open it. To disassemble it, it is only necessary to remove all the screws of the back, although what grabs the ventilation grill to the middle plate can be left there. Once the back plate has been removed, we remove the cable from the cover. Here we already can see the circuit. To remove it, remove other screws that are deep inside. The plate is attached to a very large heat sink, it must be removed with care. These transformer and speakers connectors should be removed to get everything out. Once disconnected, here we have the whole circuit of the system. To open this box, you have to warm it to weaken the glue, but it was very difficult to open it even that. And here we have it. This top plate is the preamplifier. It contains the adjustment of the bass and the inputs of all the channels. This connector sends everything for the amplifier. At the bottom we only have a series of electronic switches and operational amplifiers. I could not find a single digital circuit so I do not know how it is that it has a digital input or it can detect digital input. On the amplifier board, we have a 5 volt regulator in front of us. I noticed that the plate was burned a little at the bottom of this regulator, so before reassembling I added a larger heatsink. 
The amplifier board also obviously contains the input pin coming from the preamplifier board, the two base connectors and the main transformer connector. It also contains the amplification circuits that in this case are five integrated circuits and are distributed to the center speaker, front speakers, rear speakers and the two subwoofer or bass speakers. We have three integrated amplifier circuits, LM4765T, that handles satellite speakers and each chip is capable of pulling two outputs of 30 watts each as well as driving in bridge mode to add both outputs sum into one. The two LM3886TS are 68 watt amplifiers and each one moves one of the two bass speaker in the subwoofer's box. I do not have an optical to analog adapter at this time, but we can still use this equipment with a computer with a single analog stereo output. For this, I brought two adapters that receive two stereo inputs and convert it into one, so that the only stereo output of the computer becomes three stereo outputs. Of course this will not be 5.1. It is more like 2.1 with output for four speakers. The difference is that the 5.1 sound has a different output for each satellite speaker, and this system will give me the same output on each channel. The left and right rear speakers will share the same left signal and the right rear and front speakers will receive the same signal from the right channel both. I will not connect the center as it would receive one of the two channels and this would make either the right side or the left side to have an extra loudspeaker and would not be very symmetrical. And here we already see this system working on a computer with stereo analog outputs and playing through its original speakers. The distortion that is heard by the bass is the way the microphone picks up the subwoofer but in reality the vibration is not perceptible here. Of course they need some good headphones or equipment with subwoofer to appreciate the difference in equalization but here I leave them. Thank you.